This is Robbie Mack with a quick video on my resin setup and post-processing. I've had a bunch of friends ask me about resin printing, what's involved, what kind of cleanup, and what kind of post-processing is required. So I decided to go ahead and make this video to explain the process that I use. This is my resin printing work area. I apologize for the mess as it's tucked away in the utility room which is still under construction. I recently insulated and finished this room and plan to add ventilation for the printer soon. I found this workbench on Facebook Marketplace for around $75. It's a bit flimsy for a real workbench, but for light crafting, painting, and 3D printing such as this, it works for my needs. It has a pegboard backboard and a pullout drawer along with upper and lower shelves. The work surface is 3 8 inch MDF. In the future, I may swap it out for some half inch plywood but for the moment I covered the 48 inch by 24 inch surface with some shelf paper to make cleanup easier. I currently run two Anycubic Photon printers. They have performed well for me but recently there have been many more DLP printers coming to market at a lower cost. And if you didn't notice already I'm a big fan of Soriatek resins. I've tried some others in the past but honestly if it isn't broke don't fix it and Soriatek has always worked for me. Sculpt has high heat resistance, blue and blue clear are really strong, fast is a good all around resin, tenacious is real flexible. If you want to visit their website they have all kinds of data sheet and information on all of these various resins that they sell. I highly recommend using 99% isopropyl alcohol as 91% just doesn't do the job in my opinion. You can find it on Amazon, but here in the U.S. they charge a hazmat fee when shipping in large containers. But ironically, you can still get large quantities when it's split up into smaller bottles, even though it's all in the same box. I also use some large 142 ounce food storage containers in addition to the usual smaller 23 ounce pickling jars you see everyone else using. All have airtight seals so the alcohol doesn't evaporate. I also keep a spare spray bottle filled with IPA handy as well. Remember the pegboard backboard? That comes in very handy when resin printing because inevitably when cleaning parts you're going to find yourself with only one hand available to grab whatever you need next. Having your tools at the ready like shown here is really helpful. A silicone funnel and a paint strainer filter are handy when pouring unused resin back into a container. A hair dryer is going to be seen later in the video. A paper towel holder is a must. You need to be able to grab and tear off a sheet of paper towel with one hand only. And a metal scraper or putty knife is an absolute necessity. Because a metal scraper or putty knife, as it's commonly called, is used to remove prints from the build plate. But you know what isn't used to remove prints from the build plate? This plastic scraper. It should only be used to remove failed prints and bits that get stuck to the FEP sheet in your vat. The first time you use this plastic scraper to remove a print from the build plate, it's going to get dent up, dinged up, and damaged. And the moment it gets bent out of shape like that, it becomes worthless and you risk damaging your FEP sheet should you try to use it to remove any failed print stuck to the vat in the future. It goes without saying, using a metal scraper on your FEP sheet is pretty much a recipe for disaster. A quick note on the paper towels, if you can get paper towels that have the half sheet perforations, uh, you're going to use a lot less paper towels during this process. Additionally, I have an extra vat along with some 3D printed lids for storage and protection from UV rays, a small silicone squeegee that's helpful for cleaning out the vat, a soft toothbrush, some snips, and a Teflon baking pan. I see a lot of people using silicone mats, and I think those work well if you have a large area to work with, but Teflon is also non-stick, and the metal pan is a bit more durable when your scraper slams down into it while removing prints off the build plate. I'm also a fan of Sprayway Glass Cleaner for cleaning up the FEP sheet and LCD screen. A big hat tip to Garrett over at 3D Print Farm for recommending that. If you haven't checked out his channel, please do so, as most of what I've learned was gained from watching his videos. He has some awesome beginner tutorials in resin printing. Optionally, I have an ultrasonic cleaner that contains Mean Green. We don't want to run IPA in an ultrasonic cleaner because it can aerate the IPA, which can create a fire risk. I have a small homemade curing station off to the side. And lastly, all the useless crap I have laying around this workbench, I'm pretty sure that this storage hook is going to be a necessity, so I would run out and get one as soon as possible. First thing we're going to do is grab our gloves. 
you want to make sure that you don't risk any contamination and coming in skin contact with the resin. We're going to grab our first stage IPA in a large container. Airtight lid, we're going to remove that. And I'm going to grab some paper towels ahead of time. I'm going to grab three. Really, I only need two, but I want to make sure that I got an extra on hand. I'm going to take one and fold it. And I'm going to put it down in the Teflon tray. I'm going to remove the print from the printer. Bring the build plate over and give it a good swoosh in the IPA. Really, this is a whole lot of time for most of the Soriatec resins that I've dealt with. Usually, you only want to rinse it for like 10 15 seconds or so. But I like doing this on the build plate because it helps clean the build plate off in the same process as getting the print cleaned off. And we're going to bring that over to the Teflon plate. I'm going to grab my scraper. And we're going to remove that from the build plate. Before we do, let's touch on the build plate removal. When removing parts from the build plate, you don't want to have a whole lot of pressure on the head that actually attaches to the printer because you don't want to mess up the ball joint. So you want to position the build plate so it's perpendicular to the surface you're scraping down against so that you're just basically keeping it from tipping over. You don't want to mess up that head at all. And if you have to, you can rotate the build plate so that you can get a different angle on whatever part it is that you're trying to scrape off. And so using that method, we're going to pry down underneath that raft, pop that print off of there, grab another paper towel. Now I'm going to dip that build plate in one last time just to get the excess resin off. Wipe it down real good. and put that back on our printer so it's out of our way. And because we didn't wrench hard on that head on that build plate, it should be nice and level for the next print. Next I'm going to take that print, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, and we're going to start that up. This runs for eight minutes and I'll put it on a heat cycle. It's already preheated. That's going to help with support removal later on. Put our lid back on our first stage IPA. Put that back down underneath the shelf and I'll wipe off my scraper tool and hang it back up there. Clean out my Teflon pan and when I dispose of everything all of the napkins, I actually bundle them up in my gloves so that I dispose of everything without coming in contact with any resin and it all stays contained within those gloves. Okay, I actually run two eight minute cycles on my ultrasonic cleaner. Um, in this instance, I'm cutting out a little bit early, which is fine. I grab a couple of paper towels, my Teflon pan, and I fold one of those paper towels in half and lay it in the bottom of the Teflon pan to, to prep my work area for the support removal. It's important to note that the ultrasonic cleaner is heated, so it does actually make the supports a lot softer and easier to remove um, but in some cases you run into prints where the supports are real close to the model uh, between the raft and the model and it could be difficult to try to actually trim the model away so I find it's easier to actually trim the support away from the raft first and then come back later and trim all the individual supports away from the model. Uh, it just makes it easier to get the snips in without the raft being in the way. 
If you don't have a heated ultrasonic cleaner, you can also leave a part in hot water for 10 minutes to make support removal easier. While we're doing this, I, I do want to touch on that if you haven't noticed already, I'm pretty much always wearing gloves when I'm working in this area. All of these things on this desk are covered in resin in some way, shape, or form. It's inevitable. I don't go crazy trying to clean off my ultrasonic cleaner and the jar lids and the tools and everything. Um, it, it's, it's overkill. So pretty much what I do is just make sure that I'm always wearing gloves whenever I touch anything that's, that's on this bench. And so the various tools that I use, I know up front are all covered in resin. Now that the raft is away, I can start cutting away at the individual supports that are on the model. Um, in this instance, I use medium and small supports um, from, from 3D Printing Pro and, and his settings. I will link to his channel as well because he has very good support settings in my opinion. Um, the small supports will just tear away, especially when they're heated. Uh, the medium supports definitely need snipped. So we'll just go ahead and continue cleaning and trimming away. In all, it took me about three minutes to do the first stage of processing. And, uh, and this second stage here is gonna take me about eight minutes to do. So you're looking at about 11 minutes, um, not including the, the eight minutes that I walked away and it was, it was sitting in the ultrasonic. Um, so, you know, 15 minutes of cleanup on a, on a part really isn't that bad, especially compared to some FDM prints where it, it takes me a tremendous amount of effort to try to remove supports and then sanding and filing and all sorts of things afterwards. There's still a little sanding and filing on this, but uh, resin, sands and files and cleans up way easier than any FDM, PLA, PETG, or ABS does. You can use a utility knife to try to scrape away some parts. In this case, they're uh, thin supports that are just kind of stuck to the to the wall there. Um, they come off real easy. Probably don't even have to use a knife, but just want to show that you can. Now that the supports are all removed, we're ready to rinse in our second stage IPA. You'll notice the liquid is a bit dirty and greenish looking. It's not quite as dirty as it looks though, as this is mostly due to the mean green that collects in this container. And it's in this stage that I'll use a soft toothbrush if I have to, to try to get into any little cracks and crevices or if there's anything, any resin still remaining after this stage. And then finally, we'll go to the stage three IPA that's pretty clean and clear. This ensures that any oily residue from the mean green or resin is completely removed. We're gonna fold up one more paper towel. We're gonna swish around that part one last little bit and get it out of there, set it on the paper towel. And we're gonna grab our blow dryer and we're gonna put it on a cool setting. All we wanna do is blow air on it so that it evaporates that IPA because we don't wanna cure a part when it still has uh, IPA or resin still liquid on it. We wanna make sure it's completely dry. After the part's dry, we'll inspect it to make sure that there's not any liquidy areas, any shiny areas that still show that the resin hasn't been washed away and completely dried. If we have to, we'll go back and use the toothbrush. And this is what I can also use a spray bottle for that I can actually spray some IPA directly onto the affected area and try to blow it out of there and wipe it down and then turn around and blow dry it again until the part is completely dry before we go ahead and cure it. 
This is my cure station. It's a simple Walmart tote that I found opens up. I got LED strips in there and a UV light in there and a solar turntable. You'll notice I also have some support prints that are in there. I always cure everything I print so I can throw it in the trash or possibly use it to prop up models while I'm curing. I also get questions about disposal of old IPA and Mean Green. But in reality, I recycle most of it by curing the containers, either out in the sun or under my UV lights. It takes a couple of days for the resin to settle to the bottom of the container, but afterwards you can strain it through some paint strainers or even an old towel so you can reuse it. And so that's about it. I'm not sure I'm doing it all the best or right way, but it seems to be working for me at the moment. And of course, I'll always learn to continue from other makers out there. Overall, I don't think the process is overly time consuming especially compared to FDM post-processing when it comes to support materials. Nor do I think it's as messy as some people claim it to be, but hopefully you picked up a tip or two here. And if you want more, then be sure to check out the channels I've linked below for more in-depth information on resin printing. Thanks for watching, guys.